Elegoo sent me their new Neptune 3 3D printer. So let's open it up and get everything in the box and see what we have here. And with everything out of the box, I'm happy to see that it is mostly assembled. Unlike how the Neptune 2 came, which was mostly in pieces. And came with a bag of a decent amount of bolts. And for the Neptune 3, there's way less bolts that you have to deal with. Only four bolts hold the gantry to the bottom half of the printer. And these are easy enough to put in just by leaning everything to its side. And all the tools to assemble and disassemble this machine came with it. The power supply is held in with just two more bolts. Two more bolts are used on the handle that goes on the top of the machine, which this handle comes in really handy for moving this machine around. And the last two bolts hold in this spool holder. And there's another plastic part that screws into the spool holder to actually hold your spool. And with all that assembled, I just have to plug in three connectors. And so far, this is one of the easiest printers I've had to assemble. And on the power supply, make sure to switch it to the right voltage for your area. And the last thing I need to do is plug in this old phone cable that attaches to the screen. And the screen mounts over here on the side, and you can remove this at any time when using the screen. And with everything done, I can turn it on and see if everything works. And it looks like everything powered up okay. This screen, though, really reminds me of the Lotmax Shark, seeing that it has almost the same setup. But anyways, I'm not done with the setup on the machine yet. And I've already done the first thing on this checklist, but I need to check for wobbles in other areas, along with tightening up the belts if they're too loose. And then I can run the auto leveling on this printer to get everything ready to go. So it looks like my hot end assembly is fine how it is, but the rollers on the print bed need some tightening, along with the Y axis being just way too loose. But luckily there's an adjustment knob built in that I can tighten this up with. So you might've noticed that there's no adjustment knobs on the bed, and that's because all leveling is done in the software. It will basically go around and probe 16 points of the bed. And you might also notice that there's no BL touch or any type of thing like that on here. And it's just the nozzle touching the bed. And according to their website, they're using a resistance strain gauge or a pressure sensor. But honestly, as long as it works, I really don't care what they're using. I'm going to use this feeler gauge to adjust the Z offset after it did all of its probing. And you can also use a piece of A4 paper to do this. With all that set up, I'm going to do my first test print using some build series PLA for Matter Hackers. When it comes to loading the filament, you have to push it through the rollers, then through the filament runout sensor, and then into your extruder. And with the hot end all warmed up, I'm just going to push load on the screen, and it should push everything through and come out the nozzle. This does come with a micro SD card with the test print on it, and I just need to plug this into the printer. I really wish they would stop using the micro SD cards for these, seeing that they're really small and kind of hard to work with. But anyways, using the screen and in the print option, I can start my print. And this took about an hour and 17 minutes to complete. But when it did, it looks like it came out just about perfect. And it easily popped off the magnetic bed. And here's a closer look at it so you can see what everything looks like. But now I'm going to print something that I prepared and sliced. And I'm also going to use this little camera control unit to print and record everything and see how it works with this particular printer. This will basically allow me to control a printer over Wi-Fi, even though this printer doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. And I'm going to make a dedicated video to this little camera thing in the near future. But if you're interested in one or want more info on it, I'll have a link in the description to the product page for it. But all of the time lapses you see in this video will be made using this little camera. But anyways, after about six hours, here's our finished print. This is an ornamental Gengar I found on Thingiverse. And I thought it'd be perfect for the silk purple color. But as you can see, this has a lot of tree supports on it. So let me get it off the build plate by flexing it and remove all those supports. And here it is all cleaned up, and it looks pretty good actually. You might notice a couple lines here and there that are a little deeper than normal, and this just might be my settings not being 100% perfect, seeing that I'm just using whatever default settings that came on the slicer for this printer. But this is totally passable in my book. So there's no real surprise that this can print PLA with no problems. So let's try something a little bit harder, like some ASA from Polymaker. And at first I was having some problems with it. It was not sticking to the bed and warping and just failing prints. But after tuning some temps and making sure the fan was completely off, I was successful in my print. Even though one corner started to warp just a tiny bit, and it looks like I was a little too close on my leveling with this one. But with that said, these are very minor problems and this is totally usable still. Also removing the supports on this were really easy and it just popped right off. And now I have something I can throw all the tools that came with this into and keep them on the machine. And for one of my last tests, I wanted to see how this would do in a spiralized or face mode using that little camera to control it, seeing that it has to stop every so often to take a picture. And as you can see, it's moving really fast and I think I need to change some settings in the little camera unit, but I'm just gonna let it go and see if it completes or not. And surprisingly, it actually finished and here's the time lapse of it going. But just because it finished doesn't mean that it came out perfect. It is under extruded all over the place, which actually make it look pretty cool, but is also a total failed print. So I loaded the exact same G-code file into the printer itself and had it reprint it. And it 
it came out just about perfect. It just needs to be slowed down a little bit more at the top and it would have came out perfectly. One of the features I'm really happy to see that they added to this printer is the ability to actually change all your settings on the go in the software itself, like your Z offset, which you weren't able to do before. And this really helps for fine tuning your first layer, and in my opinion should be standard on every printer. So this is a pretty good entry level printer with a lot of helpful features that are just built into it so you don't have to worry about tinkering with it or upgrading it. It has silent stepper drivers and pretty much silent fans, so you're not going to need to worry about it making too much noise. It also has power outage resume printing, and the filament runout sensor will stop everything if you run out of filament or if you get a clog or break. And you're getting all this for $220, which is really cheap for all the stuff you're getting on this printer, and something you could just throw together and get printing pretty much right away. But those are just my thoughts. If you have any questions, let me know, and if you want anything that I showed in this video, I'll have links to everything in the description below. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!